Hey everyone, welcome back to an exciting episode of Attacker Productions. Apparently I can't talk today, but like always there's buttons, and today I'm being joined by Jimmy, Jake, Tanner, and like always, Fluff. Howdy. What's going on, y'all? So, I will offer a prize to anyone who can find an Attack on Production video where Bancroft doesn't mess up talking. I will buy you one card. Does it... Is the value maybe, of the card? Maybe, maybe, maybe one pack of World Martial Arts Tournament. How about that? There we go. I, I, I'm, I'm going to do... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say hi before I get left in the dust. <laughs> 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 um, today's matchup, we got uh, Tanner uh, bringing back Old School Revive Coup versus the... Is it, this is the reboot original leader, right? This is the this is the reboot of Soul Striker. Of Soul Striker, yeah, uh, that's being piloted by Jimmy. Guys, take it away. All right, so uh, Tanner, you are playing a deck that you spent a lot of time with early on, uh, and did have a little bit of success with it. You ended up dropping the deck, but it's always been something that you've come back to and you've constantly talked about. So how did it feel coming back to that deck tonight? It's like going back to any X. It's fun for the first time, and then it's just miserable the rest of the time there. <laughs> so don't do it. <laughs> if you quit a deck, it's smart to quit it. But the deck is fun. Um, I just I forget how weak the front side is where you have to generate card value by attacking a leader. Um, and the fact that it awakens at four and is a hybrid, and you don't get into your gimmick until you're already in that sort of, I, I think, for life is a, a danger zone. Especially in a meta where people are calling for Celzino to get banned and its prevalence in so many decks. Uh, and you dodged the one Celzino at the shop uh, at this specific tournament, which you were yeah. lucky. I, I had to face them next round. I was going to say, yeah, I, I feel like somebody just ran Celzino and kind of bullied everybody at the shop last yeah, week. I don't uh, remember who it was. Yeah, it was really odd. It's like he kind of stepped away because he didn't want to do commentary on this video. <laughs> probably because he was ashamed of it. Probably. Uh, All right. So, so he's going to see this, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's listening. I hope so, too. Uh, that Nimbus Master Man, like, I remember reading that card and thinking, yeah, it's probably good. And then I never really put anything to it. And then I see you play it. And we played a practice match before this. And I'm like, that's just such a good card. Yeah, it, it's a fantastic card. I played it a lot in uh, in Hip Pod. And it gave me a lot of value. Uh, because it paying two for the skillless is never a bad thing. But you are still paying two for a skillless card. Uh, and in my deck, it's the start to the chain. Uh, which is the Janimba package. There was a deck very similar to this that topped a um, event recently, and this is a small variation of that. I have a much bigger variation of the list that I'm planning on bringing next week, and that's the one I will profile uh, once I'm more comfortable and I can call the list uh, uh, more of uh, something of mine instead of a uh, inspired list. To make that 10% yeah. change, right? Yeah, I'll that look. 10% change. Hey, uh, worst potential. card in the game. Worst card in the game right there. Um, as uh, I'm sure, I don't know when the videos are going to drop, but there is a strong case to be made that Dorman is not the problem. Uh, hashtag, hashtag fluff. Um, so what the hell am I? Oh, I'm dropping a green card. I'm like, why am I getting rid of that guy? Um, to, to put it in perspective, uh, I pretty much had game that turn if he did not Dorman potential. Yeah, I was going to say, your deck was very, very consistent. Like, yeah. I was shocked at, like, playing it the second time, you had no road bumps that didn't appear outside of this time I pulled a dormant. Yeah, I, uh, I seen that you tapped out. I was going for throat. Like, I knew that you had, um, uh, that you could possibly have, like, a charismatic villain in hand. I had a Mecha Gabor in hand that I was just going to drop and call 5-drop Frieza. It was, pr I pretty much, I think I could have got you down to at least one or two life that turn, depending on how many cards you wanted to combo from your hand, just from seeing you tap out. But Dorm Potential just saved you. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and that's it completely, why it's so good. It completely pushed me back an entire turn, uh, which is just absurd amount of power in one single card. And that's my biggest gripe against the card is how little you have to put in to set me back an entire turn. 
Wish I wouldn't have charged that negate. Um, to be honest, I that's why I went back to revive crew to kind of talk about the deck itself. Um, I was hoping to establish the it's not really a lock, but the deadly defender aspect of revive. Uh, once I got down to that four life, and then abuse dormant, and essentially you know lock out a turn completely. Either defend the like, uh, yeah, I countered played your skillless because I figured that'd start the engine, but probably not the best decision. Um, I, I mean, it was fine. It made me expend more energy on my turn, uh, so I could go into my chain having you know all my energy standing. Uh, if I was able to resolve the Nimbus Master and keep the skillless on field, but counterplaying it was not a bad idea. Okay, I was I meant to ask you about that after the game, but I'm also just amazed by how much versatility that leader offers with the untap or the draw. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I, I, I'm kind of shocked it hasn't done more. Like, it's taken this long for, for it to top, so to speak. I, I, I think that it's a blue leader, and you want to play a blue strategy with a blue leader. And I think that's its biggest downfall, is that blue has so many incredibly powerful packages and cards but blue struggles to end the game in a best of three format. Blue wants to extend the game into the later terms so it can use its big bombs and its uh, big packages. Um, but when you have a timed format, especially on webcam events, it's very difficult to uh, to be able to close out a game. Yeah, uh, which this deck does not really have that issue because it is a very aggressive fast deck. Uh, and can end the game very early. Like I, like I said, I could possibly end the game depending on what you had in hand, which I didn't know exactly what you had uh, on. You know, going into my third turn, uh, and, which is something kind of unheard of in blue. And what I love about this sequence of events is you and I basically exchange super combos because you know we're <laughs> uh, we're just bad at the game, I guess. You know, you charge one, I drop one. Um, I will say I do see dormant is slightly weaker in a multicolor deck because it does specify green. I've never really had to worry about that in any other deck, so it was interesting to see that as we were playing. Uh, so I ended up hardcasting the three-drop Janimba, which is not actually that big of a hit because my leader can restand an energy if I needed to, and I did lose out on that second critical attack on the three-drop Janimba because I decided to uh, pitch the ball to play the four-drop. Uh, but I did that because the 4-drop reads, the opponent can choose one of their battle cards and send it to the warp. If they do not, you get to draw one and untap one. You had no battle cards in play, so it was easy enough for me to just swing with that, untap an energy, and draw one. Uh, which gave me more value in the long run uh, than swinging with the leader, because I would only get to choose one. And that's also a 20k critical attack. Which was... Uh, very unnerving. Um, out of curiosity, are you running any altered reality in the list? No, I, I did talk with Fluff afterwards because my biggest issue the entire night was getting my either two drop skillless Janimba popped or my three drop Janimba popped. Uh, I really never dealt with a uh, with the issue on the four drop or six drop, which those are Janimba Xenos. They will not gain the barrier. Uh, so I thought about maybe running one or two altered reality because it is just, it's a one drop cantrip and it protects my early part of the chain, which is the weakest part, in my opinion. Um, so I could possibly try to squeeze those in in the revised version of the list. Do you find that you have problems with card quality in this list? Or uh, is it really just to add barriers? Uh, my biggest issue comes down to getting uh, Nimbus Master and the three-drop Janimba in hand. I did include one of the Psycho Demon rocking out, uh, which is a top seven searcher for a Janimba. Uh, the only targets in the deck are the three drop and the single two drop vanilla Janimba that I run in the list. Any uh, uh, great Sandman two to recur the skills from the drop like you ran and hit pot? I can't remember exactly what it did. I just know uh, was... that requires a green energy. Okay. Okay. Uh, I did actually think about the splashing green just to be able to run that, but I don't think I need it. Uh, an idea I had was to run the uh, Shinron uh, Unison of Rescue, because he plays a two-drop skillless from the drop area for his plus zero. Uh, or is it the plus, or is the minus one? One of those two. Uh, yeah. So it was basically just a free exchange, pay one to play out a um, skillless battle card. Yep, and there's where I tried to cheat. I forgot I plussed. Yeah. Um, 
And then declaring, that's the other interesting thing about Revive Coup. You have to declare the activate main. Um, realistically, I would have liked to have seen this guy a turn earlier. Um, he's kind of the bread and butter of the deck. It allows you to make them discard a card. Um, he's got the revive skill on there. Um, it's just a, an overall good card. And now that I'm on the backside, I'm going to generate value. Uh, another card I didn't see a lot of was the Dr. Euro blocker, where if your opponent makes you discard it or you discard it for a revive, it comes into play. Um, and what's funny is we dropped this deck down to 50 at the start of the match. What did you call here, Frieza? I, I call it the 5-drop Frieza. That's so right. I yeah. wanted to see this a turn earlier, and I wanted to call the 3-drop Piccolo go on. Mm -hmm. uh, I would just call it 3-drop Piccolo. Uh just so I wouldn't have to deal with clearing that off of the board, and I knew you were going to be able to get that draw to on the backside for his revive effect. Um, so I knew he was going to be pesky to get rid of once I had once uh, he was on board. So I would have liked to see Mechie to call that earlier. But mm -hmm. calling five drop freeze is never a bad issue because now it makes it so I don't have to worry about a counterplay uh, other than the what is the card called the two drop uh, extra yeah. that you played on my skillless earlier. Yeah, which that card used to be such a clutch card. I mean, that, I think every time I look at that card, I think of how the game has changed so much since that Surge format. Yeah, I think if we didn't have access to the three Unison counters, it would still be a very, very valuable card. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's outclassed by it, stuff like uh, Charismatic Villain. It's amazing how much those free counterplays inv invalidated three and four drops in this game. They were already on shaky ground after cards like uh, Vegeta the Cruel and uh, the Champa from Set 7 were printed. And then the uh, free counterplays pretty much just pushed paying for energy for a battle card out of existence. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, you did call to kill the Mecha Kabora, but we were distracted by the other things going on. Uh, we did catch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just ass. resolving everything else. The card yeah. doesn't have barrier. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, it had been a little bit since I played the deck, so I was trying to get my sequencing correct, and we were just kind of going over that, and Jimmy was walking me through it, because, again, I haven't played this deck since really the very end of set 9 into set 10, so it's just a lot of a lot of stuff going on and me bitching about how bad the deck is. <laughs> I, I mean, you uh, think about it, it's just a dormant deck at this point. That's the yeah. only reason I'm in this game. Yeah, so Dormant just it just kept pushing the turns back and back and back, and like I could have dished out so much damage uh, with the three drop Janimbas. I really got zero value off the three drop Janimbas at all, other than just being a ball target, um, because I didn't even attack with that three drop. It's a dual attack critical nineteen K, which is a fantastic card. It's insanely valuable for free by picking up a uh, uh, two or three drop Skillis. Um, but Dormant just basically said, yeah, you're not going to get value off of that. Um, and the Janimba, he gets warped at the end of the turn anyway. So I was like, ah, I'll just go ahead and pitch the ball and, you know, get my, uh, um, get my Janimba on field, you know, my four drop so I can get some value off of it. And right there, that's when we caught the Mecha Kibora. Yeah. And once you dropped that unison, I was, I, that tilted me a little bit. <laughs> it's so good. Quick question. Um, it looks like you... I can't tell if there's Shocking Death Ball in your hand or not. It looks like it is. Is there a reason why you didn't use that? If it is that... Um, the thought process was that I didn't have a kill turn next turn. Um, I thought maybe if I could pressure him... He had a big hand size at this point, so my thought process was maybe I can apply pressure with my three bodies on the field and get him down to one life and just do the good old bad omen. But I didn't feel confident in that. Um, I had already used three dormants in a row, so the deck doesn't draw enough for me to feel like I could see the fourth one. So I'm like, all right, maybe I can play a very defensive turn where I keep my deadly defender, so to speak, really well defended, keep a shocking death ball, um, and maybe push to where I have a more comfortable turn. Um, but to be honest, I probably just should have used it, in all honesty. Um, but not entirely sure here. I was hoping... Like, normally when I play 18, when the opponent just automatically knows what they're putting at the bottom of the deck, I know I'm not in a good spot because it shows that they don't need, like, they've got enough resources in hand. 
And that's kind of when I realized I probably just should use the shocking death ball the turn before, and that I probably wasn't going to last the next onslaught. Yeah, I, at this point, I had quite a few cards in my hand that were just dead uh, due to my field. Uh, and you, we had talked about the deck before, so I knew you didn't have any massive board wipes. So I wasn't too worried about losing my board shop Janimbas uh, unless you decided to minus on your unison. Mm -hmm. uh, which uh, you would only be able to hit one because I think it's three or less and then just KO another one. Yeah, Fluff made a good recommendation. And so I was originally running the Vegito Unison, Demigra Unison, and then uh, the Frieza Unison. And it was two Vegito, two Frieza, three uh, Demigra. And he says, and I agree, to run the anniversary box uh, Bibbity Unison that does the board wipe. Yeah. And I have to think that that would have been very handy here. Uh, um, of course it would be. That, that unison is absurd. Yeah. And, yeah. And no one ever expects that unison to come when it does. The AOD? Yeah. Yeah, Vegeta AOD, That's the Maja Vegeta. Yeah. Um, and again, at this point, I realize I'm kind of in a tough spot. Um, I don't think the rebrands, if I had any... I mean, I have some, but I took them out. I don't think that would have helped me at all in this turn. I think I maybe could have just dwindled your hand a little bit more. Um, it feels bad having five open energy. Um, and at this point, I'm contemplating, do I try to pressure you through Foo and dwindle your hand down a little bit? Or do I keep the five energy open and try to like bluff you into thinking I have the secret rare Vegeta? But I don't think that was going to do me any good either. So at this point, it was just... It, there wasn't much for me to do. And, and I, I was really, I was actually really thinking about taking the Demigra attack. I, I think in our match, I actually like just said no negate. And then we started moving on to autos and I called the blocker a little bit later than I should have. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you, were nice enough, you, were, you were nice enough to let me keep that, but I did, I was very wary of the uh, 21 in your energy. Uh, and I was scared that you had a way to get me down to two life with some sort of double strike. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just play 21 on me, which I had no way to deal with. Um, which actually, I do think I had a god ceiling in hand, so I could have bounced it. Uh, but still, I was not wanting to take that risk. And also, that Raditz Giant Force, uh, that card has put in work for me. Like every matchup that I played it in, it was fantastic. I run it as a one of in the list because I felt very comfortable running uh, five unisons for the deck mm -hmm. because we don't know Soul Striker awakens when you have a three drop unison in play. Um, so I, I just run it as a one of, just as another three drop. I did not like the baby unison in the list. I never was going to be able to do the minus five. It was just going to be there as a draw one. And Raditz is just as good as a draw one, and he's a double blocker, which is fantastic. Something, yeah, there's your God ceiling that you talked about. Um, yep. Something else that always just being out of it for a little while and only playing really in the last two months is the prevalence of the draw two super combos now. Um, I still just haven't wrapped my mind around that um, because it used to just be you, Healy's or the, the ultimate box god that got reprinted in 2020 and then Paragus. Um, those were your choices, you know what I mean? And Outside of that, there really weren't, I don't think, any uh, other draw two super combos until some and, uh, But before we pass too far, yeah. uh, I did not god seal your, um, your foo uh, because I was scared of you having another dormant potential in hand mm -hmm. uh, and being able to just play it next turn. So I was thinking, I will just let that fly because uh, I can, I was certain I was going to be able to survive it and I wasn't going to have an issue. Uh, and I didn't want to give you a chance to clap back with it if there was a... Uh, if you did have the fourth dormant in hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't have any double strike in the list. That's something I'm going to add in the revised version. Uh, or I would feel more comfortable god sealing that because I knew I would be able to get out at least... Um, or I could try to push a double strike crit on you. Mm -hmm. um, but I just chose not to uh, God Ceiling. I felt like it was better as a drop target. Yeah. And, and to clarify for anybody watching, I can still play EDK. I just don't get to discard the card. I yes. get the plus 15, but I do not get to rip the card. Yeah. Um, I charged that bean on turn three. I didn't want to. There's a charismatic. 
that didn't help me much. Um, yeah, green's just bad. I, I don't know what to say. Like, you know, it's just bad, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't want to. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I mean, I'm playing uh, a green leader. <laughs> the, you know. Jimmy talked about not including the baby unison in his list because he felt like he would never get the plus five off or the minus five off. But from having experience with Janimba, draws are fantastic because you require so many specific pieces to advance your game state. And I'm seeing what's in Jimmy's hand, and he's got a lot of gas there, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Which uh, I... I don't ever really want to play defensively with Janimba. I want it to be all gas. Uh, the Raditz gives me that draw that Baby uh, would give me, because his plus zero is draw and switch him to act mode at the end of the turn. So I still get to aggressively swing with a, uh, I, I believe he's 16k, or 19k, one of the two. I still get to aggressively swing with that body, restand, have a dual blocker, and get that draw. Uh, and his minus also restands my energy. Uh, so I feel like he was a much more valuable unison over Baby. Uh, yeah. Because I only run one five drop Baby Ape in the list, and it's just for situations like right now would be fantastic when he, you know, dropped the, uh, the Shock and Death Ball. It's like, hey, just eat that real quick. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I don't get to activate Revive here. I don't have any cards in hand, but um, I knew it was pretty <sighs> inconsequential. Honestly, I it was I had to defend that target or I was done no matter what. Um and I figured I was counting on board. I knew he probably could go into a couple more. Uh, yep. Again, the life isn't that good. I I went ahead and looked at the next two cards at the end of the game. It was inconsequential. Then he drops that, it's GG. Yeah. That card's really good. It, that card is fantastic. Such, it's such a fantastic card. Uh, I, I feel like dual attack in the late game is a lot more valuable than something like double strike. Mm -hmm. uh, due to it requiring a lot more resources for your opponent to get out of both strikes, especially with a big body that's 25,000. Uh, mm -hmm. That requires either two negates, you know, multiple uh, card combos outside of like a double strike, which is just a one and done, uh, which a surprise double strike is always fantastic with something like a double strike Champa on the big body Janimba. Uh, but I felt like that was a better fit as a finishing overrealm than something like Man on a Mission. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what were we gonna say, Tim? Oh, nothing. I was just gonna just ramble on about revive coup. So nothing important. Well, with that being said, thank you all for tuning in. Hope you all enjoyed. Like I said earlier, there's buttons. Feel free to click them. And with that being said, last words, uh, Jimmy. Yeah, you go with me first again. Yeah. I always think about like what I'm gonna say. You fuck me up. Um. Do. You I actually got a conspiracy theory uh, that I was thinking about the other night. Do you think, like, the Dave Matthews band, like, it's not... Matthews is, like, his middle name, and band is just his last name? It's just been a facade this entire time that his name is David Band, or Dave Band. Like, and he just hires studio musicians? Yeah, yeah. Tanner, like, do you got any last words? <laughs> Um, my last words are, if you think a deck's bad and you've played it before, you're probably right. It's been there, dude. <laughs> Jake? If you want to win, you have to practice, and sometimes you just practice the wrong deck. And Fluff, would you lead us out? Well, this has been really swell, but the swelling's gone down at this point, so as always, read your cards, know your plays, let us make the mistakes so you don't have to. And fluff out.